สวัสดีค่ะ Good evening Welcome to Thai PBS English News Service I'm Rung Thip Chon Apa Lai It's been two weeks since Parliament gave the go ahead to the Constitution Amendment sub Subcommittee yet government MPs and the opposition are still unsettled over details of the Charter Amendment especially on the granting of amnesty to political players Meanwhile Deputy Prime Minister Chen Le Miu Bam Rung says there is a chance of seeing former Prime Minister Thaksin returning to this country this year regardless of whether the constitution amendments are completed or not. Commenting on the former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat um, um, comment in South Korea yesterday that he is returning to Thailand this year, Shalom Yubam Lung says there is a possibility. Personally speaking, Shalom says he feels the former Premier did not do anything illegal, but some of the things Thaksin did were not allowed by the law. During the Per Thai election campaign last year, Shalom announced that he will be the person to bring Thaksin home and not act as a fugitive. General Ekachai C. Vilad of the Prapok Gao Institute says that the think tank agrees with granting amnesty for reconciliation reasons, saying the idea will not favor anyone in particular. The opposition party is totally against this idea. Meanwhile, the Constitution Amendment Committee, which is comprised of government, and opposition part MPs and senators are not agreeing on the charter amendment with the opposition saying that the committee must write down in black and white that articles concerning the monarchy, the courts, independent organizations and amnesty must not be touched. Government MPs suggest that the amendment process should move ahead without committing to written details as parliament has already voted for the amendment. The government's legal consultation unit and the election commissions will next week meet to conclude which articles to amend and the time frame for charter amendment. Today is the first day where victims of political movements in Thailand between 2005 and 2010 can register to receive compensation from the state. However, since original copies of documents such as death certificates, medical receipts are, are required, the number of registrants were not as many as um, that had been anticipated. A number of red and yellow clad protesters who were injured or became disabled following their political movement since 2005 up to the Rajabasong crackdown in mid-2010, gathered at the Young Girls Foundation on Rajaviti Road. These included the relatives of those who lost their lives in the political clashes and government crackdown. A number of victims went home empty-handed, not knowing that original documents such as ID cards, death certificates, marriage certificates, medical reports and receipts were, are required. The government estimated those injured or disabled during political activities between 2008 and 2010 would be around 2,200 people with around 102 deaths. The rate of registration is expected to be 500 people per day. Meanwhile, some Chai Gerdungreung, uncle of a nine-year-old boy, accidentally shot dead by police in 2003 as police arrested his father, who was a drug dealer at that time, is asking the court for the same compensation that as the political victims are getting. He claims his dead nephew should receive compensation, otherwise the government would be seen as having double standards. Also, Satit Pitutesha, a Democrat MP, asked the court to hold the political compensation scheme, claiming the previous government also allocated a budget for political victims, but that the Democrat scheme is still mired in the red tape process. The Ministry of Energy confirmed that it is ready to face an oil crisis if Iran closes the state of Hermes. Domestic oil reserve will be increased to, the, to be sufficient to handle the tense situation if it so arises. The Energy Ministry is increasing oil reserves in preparation for a potential oil crisis. A distinct possibility if Iran closes the state of Hermes, its measures include deploying more shortage tanks as well as floating storage at sea. Another additional measure includes promoting energy conservation. The ministry projects that the oil reserves will last as long as 64 days, giving it adequate time to source more oil through other channels. 
Surong Bungun's director of Thai oil company said that refinery firms will also help counter rising oil prices. Refinery firms will re reduce the transportation cost of oil, maximize storage used, and tap into new sources of oil. Surong further mentioned that the petroleum, um, the PTT, can open alternative supplies of oil from sources like West Africa, Central America, and Central Asia. At present, Thailand imports 500,000 barrels of oil per day, which is shipped via the Strait of Hermes. With the U.S. presidential election around the corner, the Ministry of Energy forecasts that there is a high possibility of the U.S. joining Israel to attack Iran. The increase in oil prices this year can be attributed to two factors, namely the tense situation in the Straits of Hormuz and the recovery of the U.S. economy, which drives up oil demand. The price of crude oil skyrocketed from 108 U.S. dollars at the start of the year to 120 US dollars today. Every day, um, 13,000 people die from traffic accidents, and um, worldwide, why 30 deaths per day occur in Thailand alone. Thailand has joined the Moscow Declaration in hopes of reducing road casualty by half within 10 years or by 2020. A successful model being used in Victoria, Australia could possibly help Thailand achieve this goal. Here's more from Kun Bandit Gert Bandit. This is one of the many attention-gripping ads promoted by the Transport Accident Commission, or TAC, of Victoria, Australia. Since the first commercial went on air in 1989, the number of traffic accidents in the state plummeted from 776 cases that year to merely 300 cases today, an impressive 60% decline in 20 years. John Thompson, a TAC member, confessed that the dramatic nature of the accident prevention ads is purposely done to caution the public about reckless driving. The fear of these deadly ramifications can make the public more cautious, hence reducing traffic accidents. Such sensational ads, however, are banned in Thailand. Additionally, Thompson believed that Thai insurance firms should copy the TAC's insurance policy which covers traffic accident victims for life. The policy is financed through vehicle registration payments, which are then invested in safe securities. So we take that, that, that money that we invest and we take a small proportion of that money and we spend that on prevention strategies. So what we want to do as an insurance company is reduce the number of people who would claim against our insurance scheme. And that's a key focus of the Transport Accident Commission in Victoria. Currently, the TAC's long-term compensation scheme covers around 36,000 clients for the rest of their lives, costing the organization an overwhelming 7 billion Australian dollars, or 228 billion Thai baht. This exorbitant cost incentivized TAC to be a champion of traffic accident prevention. In contrast, Thai insurance companies do not cover traffic accident victims for life, but instead make a one-time compensation payment, which reduces the incentive to promote road safety. Thailand has one of the highest traffic accident rates in the region. Last year alone saw 10,172 deaths, or around 30 fatalities per day. In economic terms, more than 150 billion baht is lost annually to traffic accidents, accounting for 2% of the country's GDP. Thailand is now part of the United Nations Decade of Action, in which member countries are encouraged to reduce road casualties by half within 10 years, or by year 2020. This is Bandit Gut Bandit, Thai PBS. Thank you, Kun Bandit. And the ASEAN economic community not only uh, erases economic opportunities, but it also presents a chance to strengthen peace and security in the region. A seminar on Thailand's readiness for an integrated ASEAN was held today, in which keynote speakers emphasized the need to better prepare for the Thai army for the imminent change. A seminar on Thailand's readiness. On the path towards an integrated ASEAN 2015 was held today by the Defence Technology Institute to commemorate its third anniversary. Many of the military's top brass attended the event.
Dr. Surin Pitsuwan, Secretary General of ASEAN, and General Surya Chulanon, Privy Councillor, were the keynote speakers. Dr. Surin stressed that the ASEAN Economic Community, which comes into effect in just three years, is not just about business and a bigger market. Instead, it also represents an opportunity for the ten member countries' military forces to collaborate in pursuit of peace and security. The Secretary General noted that in the ever more globalized world, countries are becoming more and more vulnerable to cross border terrorist activities. Hence, this regional integration is important for national security, and the Royal Thai Army needs to improve itself to keep up with the imminent changes. General Suryad suggested that the Thai Army needs to improve in five key areas. It needs to develop an open mindset towards new changes, acquire language skills, upgrade military supplies, promote democratic governance, and enhance news dissemination among the three military units. Meanwhile, General Suryat cautioned that while ASEAN integration is paramount, the Thai army still has to be self-reliant. Dependence on others would place restrictions on military operations, especially in times of war. The general told of a lesson where Thailand purchased AMRAAM missiles from the US, but was not allowed to use them without America's permission. The ASEAN Economic Community is to be implemented by 2015. Its three important pillars include political security, economic integration, and social and cultural cohesion. The haze problem in the northern region of Thailand continues to aggravate, causing poor air quality. Many health organizations are urging farmers to use alternative approaches to fertilize soil as opposed to burning forest. Many organizations have warned the local farmers to use the, the organism fertilizer instead of burned forest, aiming to decrease the air pollution. The dust particle level still exceeds 219 micrograms per cubic meter, as well as in Payao. The dust particle level is over the standard level. Jamra Aliyata, the officer of Department of Livestock Development in Payao, has urged the farmers to concern about their domestic animals' health, especially the pigs, which possibly could cause the asthma by increasing the moisture in their livestock farms and closely observing their health. Skies in Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai remain covered in thick haze. With poor visibility, residents have to be extra cautious while traveling. Meanwhile, for forest fires continue to burn in many provinces, causing dust particles in the air to increase. Today is International Women's Day, the day to honor the work of the women and other women successes from all over the world. Today is also a reminder of gender e inequality. Uh, we have gathered a few examples of outstanding women, starting with the female democratic um, from icon from Southeast Asia, Aung San Suu Kyi, the Nobel Peace Prize winner in 1991. She is a pro-democracy leader who has created a great impact on the political movement in Myanmar, especially ahead of the upcoming elections. She has launched many campaigns and given countless speeches expressing her idea of democracy. The huge crowd supporting her show that she is the new hope for most people in Myanmar. This democracy activist has spent 20 years as a political prisoner before being released two years ago. Ying Lakshinawat, Thailand's first female and youngest prime minister, is a Thai businesswoman and politician and a, num um, and a member of the Pure Thai Party. Her appointment as PM shows that the women's role in Thailand has significantly increased compared with the past. Moving from Asia to South America, Brazil is another country where, for the past few months, has the first female president. She is another democracy activist who has dedicated most of her life to fighting against dictatorship. She has also arrested during the 70s and 80s before joining the Workers' Party and taking a political path, leading her to successful presidential election.
From the Arab world, um, here is the Tabakil Kamen. She is Muslim journalist and politician who received the Nobel Peace Prize last year for nonviolent role in promoting democracy and gender equality. And in Thailand, many events honor International Women's Day, including one being held by the U.S. Ambassador to Thailand, His Her Excellency Christy Kenny, being attended by women from all walks of life. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Hi PBS English News Service. I'm Rung Tip Chuan Thank you so much for watching. สวัสดีค่ะ